Father, we thank you for the word. You're just so wonderful to us. We love your word and we approach it with reverence. And we expect the word to produce healing in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. 19 years ago, I wrote a book called Beauty for Ashes. 1994, I wrote this book. It's a little bit of my testimony and then talks about steps to take to overcome emotional wounding or abuse of any kind in your life. This book is just full of good information and little snippets that will help you begin to really enjoy the life that Jesus died to give you. I'm actually going to teach on this this weekend. In Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3, there are scriptures that carried me through many of the first years of, I might say, my very confusing walk with God. <laughs> Because very often we think, well, you know, I've got Christ now, I'm going to church, everything should start turning around in our lives. But it doesn't always happen just that way. I was in a large denomination and I took instructions in the church and I, I joined the church and interestingly enough, not much got better in my life. Now I did have some knowledge inside of me that of Christ as my Savior, and I heard a good foundational message about grace. I understood grace. I understood the doctrinal things that we need to understand. I heard good teaching about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the blood of Christ, the death and resurrection of Christ, but what to do with my everyday life, I did not know at all. <laughs> and in 1976, God touched my life in a real powerful way, and he gave me a real hunger for his word, and I began to study the word. And I began to realize that I had many, many, many problems in my soul that were left over from the abuse in my childhood. You see, very often, if we're in a circumstance that's hurting us, or maybe as a child you grew up in a situation where you were being hurt, maybe you weren't given love and attention, maybe you had a lot of verbal abuse, so some, some angry person telling you you're no good all the time, or always finding fault with you, and saying critical things to you, you'll never amount to anything, why can't you be like your brother, why can't you be like your sister, whatever it is that angry people say, or maybe you were sexually abused like I was by your dad, your mom, somebody else in the family, a neighbor, maybe it was one or two times, maybe it was many years like what I went through. Maybe you were physically abused. I know people that were locked in closets, denied food, beaten unmercifully because they had mentally ill parents or angry parents. It's amazing the horrible things that people do to other people. But one thing that has really helped me is to remember that hurting people hurt people. Hurting people hurt people. I don't think there's very many people who just get up every day and think, well, I'm just going to see how many people I can make miserable today. I really think that people many times are acting out of their own pain. And what Satan wants, of course, is for someone to hurt us and then for us to be angry and bitter and resentful, have a chip on our shoulder, spend our life feeling sorry for ourselves, get into all kinds of addictive behaviors, and then spend our lives hating somebody else and hurting somebody else so they can then turn around and do the same thing and then there it goes from generation to generation to generation. But I'm here to announce good news to you tonight that if you've been hurt in the past, it does not have to go beyond you to anyone else. You have the privilege of speaking the name of Jesus and believing in the power of God to not only completely heal you and make you just as if it never happened to you, but to never let it go on to anybody else in your generation. And that is wonderful good news. Amen, give God a big praise. In those early years, I needed so desperately to believe the promises of God as I was trying to study this and, and walk it out in my life. 
I'm not going to tell you that if you've been hurt really bad and you've got a big mess in your soul, your mind is messed up, your emotions are messed up, you don't know how to make right decisions, maybe you want to be in control of everything, or maybe you've become real passive and you don't want to make any real choices, you just kind of float through life and wait to see what's going to happen day after day. It's going to take some time and some diligence and some study and some prayer to walk out this healing that is yours by virtue of the blood of Christ. What we have legally as a gift from God, we have to learn how to apply experientially in our everyday life. And sometimes people get confused because they say, but, but you said Jesus set me free. Well, then why am I not free? You said I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus, so why am I still in a mess? You said that he would give me beauty for ashes, but why is my life still falling apart? Because all of those things are, they do belong to every one of us. Every person watching my TV, you've ever been hurt, anybody's ever abused you, misused you, you've been abandoned, you've been betrayed, you've had peers in your life make fun of you, you've been rejected, whatever it is, and you're emotionally wounded right now. You're, you're what I would term a broken-hearted person. The good news is, is Jesus has already set you free. He has already set you free. Now, part of, part of my job as a teacher in the body of Christ is to teach you how to walk out of those prison doors, that all, those prisons that already have open doors, to teach you to see what's yours and to believe it enough to reach out and begin to put it into action in your life. It's a wonderful journey. Absolutely amazing, wonderful journey. How many of you think you understood what I just said? At least to some degree, okay? And it helps to understand that because then you're not wondering, well, well, if I'm saved, what's wrong with me? Well, you know, you can be saved, but maybe you haven't renewed your mind yet. I was saved, but I mean, my mind was a garbage pit. I didn't know how to think right. I was critical and judgmental and suspicious and angry, and, and many of my thoughts were dark and lonely, and I didn't know that every time I read this, I was learning how to think different. If we know how valuable this is, we'll spend a lot more time in it than just a few seconds a day, maybe on a good day. Amen? My emotions were a mess. I didn't know how to get along with people. I was just... I was a nightmare in relationships, and my will was messed up. I went from one extreme to the other. I either had to be in control, or if I got around somebody stronger than me, then they would control me. So I would bounce back and forth from being controlled to being in control, and being controlled to being in control. And that's not the way that God wants us to live. And I'm kind of giving you a little picture of some of the problems that I had because I want you to know that even though I was saved and going to heaven, I was miserable because I needed healing in my soul. I thought when I walked away from my dad at the age of 18 that I was away from the problem, that I did not have the problem anymore. I'm going to get away from this problem, and then it's going to be over in my life. But I didn't realize that although I walked away from the problem, I took it with me in my soul. I still had the results of it in my soul. And many people don't realize that they need healing in their soul. Amen. Just because you get away from something that's hurting you, that doesn't mean that it has not wounded you. Jesus said he came to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. What is a brokenhearted person? I believe it's someone who's broken in personality. They're wounded in their personality. Every person shows up on planet Earth with a God-given, God-ordained temperament. Your personality develops as a result of largely that temperament, but then the things that happen to you, especially in the early years of your life. Okay, I was born a strong, type A, aggressive, choleric personality. I make quick decisions. I'm bold, I was born for leadership, I can motivate people, but I got wounded. My dad abused me sexually over and over and over for 
somewhere between 12 and 15 years. That's basically all I ever remember. My mom didn't know what to do about it, even though she knew about it, so she just didn't do anything. And so he abused me and she abandoned me. And I spent a lot of really lonely, lonely years. Lonely years. So what happened to me then in my personality was that strong personality became a controlling personality. I could cut you to pieces in a few minutes with my mouth. Amen. Now, see, God put a gift in my mouth. I literally am a mouth in the body of Christ. That, I mean, in case you haven't noticed, that's what I do, talk. And I, I don't do much else. I don't sing. I don't play a musical instrument. I talk. My anointing is in my mouth. And I'm talking all over the world by TV. So it's no wonder that the enemy worked overtime when I was just very little trying to get me so hurt and wounded on the inside that I had all this hardness in my soul. So every time I opened my mouth, something hard came out of it, something cutting. God gifted me to help people and Satan wounded me. So all he hoped I would ever do would be hurt people. But thank God, thank God. Well, thank God. <laughs> he heals the brokenhearted. He opens prison doors and he sets the captives free. Amen. And I want to tell you tonight that Jesus can heal you everywhere you hurt. He didn't just die so we could someday go to heaven and have a mansion in the sky and finally be happy. Eternal life starts the moment that we receive Christ. And eternal life includes life as God now has it. And I can tell you that he is not sitting in heaven tonight feeling sorry for himself. He is not full of bitterness and resentment. He is not depressed. He is not discouraged. He is not despondent, disappointed, or in despair. <laughs> and we have that same kind of life dwelling on the inside of us if we can just get it out of us into our soul where it can begin that healing process we need and then it can show up in our lives God wants you to walk out here tonight determined to never in your life spend one more night with the frogs what how did you get to frogs well let's go to Exodus chapter 8 <laughs> Exodus 8, the Israelites in slavery in Egypt cried out to God to send them a deliverer. Moses, who was a type of Christ, sent to deliver them. Pharaoh, who would represent the devil, did not want to let them go. So, God sent plagues one after another and said, you are going to have one miserable life until you let my people go. Well, one of those plagues was frogs. Now, <laughs> chapter 8, verse 1, Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go that they might serve me. And I'm here tonight to tell you that we're announcing to the devil, Let God's people go that they might serve God. Amen? Amen. I'll be a mouthpiece for God tonight and say, thus saith the Lord, let my people go. Amen. Amen. And if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite your entire land with frogs. And the river shall swarm with frogs, which shall go up and come into your house, into your bedchamber, on your bed, upon your people, in your ovens, in your kneading bowls, <laughs> and into your dough. God's painting a picture here. Frogs everywhere. <laughs> you know, if you have misery in your life, it's everywhere you go. <laughs> frogs. Self-pity frogs. Anger frogs. Bitterness frogs. Hateful frogs. 
Come on, are you with me out there? Yeah. When are you going to forgive the people that hurt you? When are you going to stop saying it's too hard? It's too much. It's not fair. Right now. Right now. Right now. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. These scriptures are just so wonderful. Now, this is Isaiah prophesying about Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed and qualified me to preach the gospel of good tidings to the meek, the poor, and the afflicted. You guys know that Jesus didn't go to seminary. I didn't either. And I claim the same thing that Jesus claimed. I am qualified because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the meek, the poor, and the afflicted. Now, I didn't say he didn't study. He studied all the time, and I'm sure he studied with learned men. But I'm just trying to make a point that if you missed out on a little education, that doesn't mean that God can't use you. God can anoint you to do unbelievable things. His anointing is His power. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit that comes to you and enables you to do whatever God has asked you to do. Let me tell you something. You are a miracle waiting to happen. He has sent me to preach good tidings to the meek, the poor, and the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up and to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the physical and spiritual captives and the opening of the prison and of the eyes of those who are bound. So here it is. The prison doors are opened. And I'm hoping to open your eyes tonight by the word of God to see it. Because when you see it, when you see it and you say, I don't have to live like that anymore. I don't have to be trapped in my past. I don't have to feel that I'm worthless because my mother told me I was when I was 10. I don't have to feel like it's my fault that my neighbor abused me. I don't have to live my life full of hatred and bitterness. This is a new day. The mercy of God is new every day. And today's a new beginning for me and a new beginning for every one of you and a new beginning for every one of you watching by television. You know, we love all you guys that watch by TV. You're amazing. Thank you so much for watching my program. And I hope and pray that it heals you, that the Word of God heals you in every area of your life. The opening of the prison and of the eyes of those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of His favor. And the day of the vengeance of our God. I love favor. That means that God makes things happen for you and you don't deserve them. You're just like, wow. And I love this thing about the vengeance of our God because that means that you can enter rest and God will deal with your enemies. He said, I'm anointed to comfort all who mourn. To grant consolation and joy to those who mourn in Zion. To give them an ornament of beauty instead of ashes. Now, you know, we got a lot of men here tonight, and you might think, eh, beauty for ashes. That's a little girly. I don't, you know. Well, let me tell you guys, you can use a little beautiful too once in a while. <laughs> Amen. How many are down with that tonight? You'll go along with that. Okay. So you're in the, you're in the beauty shop for your soul tonight. Beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise instead of a heavy burden and a failing spirit, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. In verse 7 and 8, 
kept me going a long time. Instead of your farmer's shame, you shall have a twofold recompense. That means reward or, or payback. <laughs> Instead of dishonor and reproach, your people shall rejoice in their portion. Now get this, therefore in their land, not when they die and go to heaven, but in their land, they shall possess double what they forfeited and everlasting joy shall be theirs. So guess what you got coming? Double for your trouble. Not double trouble, double blessings for your farmer trouble. You say, well, is there anything that I need to do? Yeah, the Holy Ghost will give you some instructions. <laughs> He'll lead you and guide you. The Holy Spirit is our counselor. And he knows exactly what to do when. So we get all put back together and it doesn't crush us in the meantime. Beauty for ashes. Double for your trouble. Why? Because I, the Lord, love justice. I love that. God is a God of justice. You know what that means, that God is a God of justice? It simply means that he makes everything that's wrong right. Beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? Now, if you're meek, poor, and afflicted, if you're wounded, if you feel lost, if you've been messed around, if you've messed your life up, you do not have to shrink back in shame and fear because you are just the person that Jesus came for. He came for those that were sick, not those that were well. You know, there are many types of abuse. Just want to go over this quickly. There's sexual abuse, verbal abuse, mental abuse. There's even spiritual abuse. Some people even get under spiritual leaders that are abusive. There's all kinds of abuse, emotional abuse. There's verbal abuse, words spoken to us that damage things. The Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue. How many of you have experienced more than your share of verbal abuse in your life? See, that, that's just like way too many people. The devil is alive and well on planet Earth. Has anybody noticed that? But I'll tell you somebody else that's got something to say to you. That's your heavenly father. And now, this is what you gotta learn how to believe. It's not what mama said to you that matters, it's what Father God says to you that matters. It's not what daddy said to you that matters, it's what Father God says to you that matters. It's not what your teacher said, or your classmate, or your brother, or your sister, even if your parents did not love you at all, let me encourage you tonight that, and please don't take this wrong, but it doesn't have to matter because God loves you. God loves you and he loves you forever and perfectly and completely and unconditionally. To be honest, I can, I can say that my parents didn't love me. I mean, my mother loved me, but you don't, you don't really love a child if you're going to abandon them <laughs> in a situation like that. Now, she had weaknesses. She had fear. I understand all that. I have nothing against her. She's going to be 89 here in a few days, and, you know, I take care of her. And so, no, there's no, no bitterness there. But I never got the kind of love that a child should have. We should learn about Father God's love from our parents. But we don't. But it's not too late for you to start right now. I don't care if you're sitting in here tonight and you are 75, you can start tonight receiving the love of God. Now the love of God is what heals our wounded soul. And so I'm gonna show you a scripture in Ephesians 3.16 that I want you to begin to pray over your life every day. Ephesians 3.16. I pray this almost every morning. You know, when you start speaking the word of God out of your own mouth, you start believing it and speaking it out of your own mouth, you start praying this word back to God. He's honor bound. 
to fulfill his own promises if you believe them. Amen. So you say, Father, I believe this and I receive it today. May he grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, come and get in my personality. Come today, Lord, and indwell my personality because I'm not going to be mean. I'm going to be sweet. I'm not going to be sad. I'm going to be joyful. I'm not going to be mad. I'm going to be glad. I'm not going to be full of self-pity today. I'm going to get myself out of this house and go help somebody that needs help. Come, Holy Ghost, and indwell my personality. How many of you will start to pray that every day? Well, I believe it's time to make a decision to walk out of bondage, leave the frogs behind, and find the freedom that Christ died for you to have. Don't live in your past pain for one more day.